start. My name is Melinda Palacio and I'm going to read an excerpt from my uh, new novel coming out in June, Ocotillo Dreams. And there just happens to be an excerpt in Strange Cargo, uh, a pen anthology. So uh, I'll start with that. Ocotillo Dreams, prologue. Red, her mother's favorite color. Long ago in her mother's kitchen, Red danced on the dish towels, tablecloths, the ristra of dried chiles rattled the hallway, the sound of red, tomato red of her mother's salsa, tongue burning red, red posture, red perfume, red footsteps. Red was the color on her mother's toenails when Isola arrived at the Maricopa County Hospital to, to claim the body. Red was the color of her plane ticket back to San Francisco. A strange trip to make with an estranged dead mother. She had accompanied the body back where she buried her mother with a spray of red roses. Isola became dizzy when the funeral director led her through the showroom's hospital and suffocating maze of coffins. The tall lady in the blazer said she'd make things easy and pointed to a white casket crowned with red roses. Our finest, the lady had said. Isola wondered what that meant. Red heels and a red dress with a flared skirt for the burial and beauty. Her mother's bon voyage in secondhand clothes. Isola had used her favorite outfit to bury her mother. Only the lipstick troubled her. Her mother wore cherry that never smudged. Isola undertook a frantic search for the right shade of red, a deep color that would last forever. Red was the color of the Ocotillo's flower. Her mother always sent the same postcard with an Ocotillo in bloom. The curse of writing below the Ocotillo haunted her. Welcome to Chandler, Arizona, where Ocotillo dreams come true. She studied the postcard, memorized each bloom and thorn, as if the cactus might transport her to her mother. Isola read the postcard over and over again. She and her mother were tied by a thin thread, an invisible string from San Francisco to the desert, however fragile, was all they needed. A new postcard would have been due next month. The last postcard mentioned a possible visit to San Francisco. Isola remembered muttering to herself, that would never happen. Cassandra's prophecy come true on a postcard from Chandler, Arizona. The glimmer of hope for a normal relationship one not left to guessing and disappointment, gone. Even more painful was not having a clue about how ill her mother had been. Isola was left with nothing but unanswered questions and a stack of postcards of Ocotillo dreams. Space break. Cruz waited until dusk to continue his long trek across the desert. In the distance, he saw a single ocotillo, its tip so red that the plant looked as though it were bleeding. A Snickers bar was his last bit of food until he reached El Norte. He closed his eyes and savored the sticky chocolate on his lips. When he looked up, he wondered why he hadn't noticed the woman seated under the ocotillo or that the red of the Ocotillo was real blood. The woman's hair and face were bloody. Her thin, curvy form and long hair reminded him of his brother's wife, Rosalina, the most beautiful woman in all of Mexico. The woman rocked herself and sang the song his mother always sang. The last time she had sung the song, his mother cried and said she might never see him again. He felt love. The scent of his mother's kitchen, cinnamon, and tortillas drifted through the desert air. The song faded into a lullaby he'd never heard before. The 
The sweet music drew him closer to the woman rocking herself under the ocotillo. She was not his mother, nor anyone he knew, but he was certain he loved her more than he'd loved anyone. Cruz cried for the woman. His tongue was numb and bleeding from his own bite. He had lost her.